everybody, it's Marcia from Oils and Wellness with Marcia, and we're continuing on with Ula, finding balance with the unbalanced world. We're almost done. Today's title is Saying Yes by Sarah Robbins. My love affair with the word yes began when I was a child growing up in Troy, Michigan. I said yes to many opportunities there. I said yes to being on the dance team. I said yes to being a cheerleader. I said yes to being on the track team. And I said yes to all my friends whenever they wanted me to do anything or needed anything from me. When I, when I look at my childhood, I smiled a lot, had serious energy, and was always up for anything. When I was 16, my parents needed to move from Troy, Michigan to Swano, Swano, Wisconsin, away from all my friends, my dance team, my track team, and everything I had known up to that point in my life. This was the first time in my life where something inside me screamed, No! When I heard the news, I felt empty, but that emptiness soon filled up with worry and fear. And millions of unanswered questions. Where is Swano, Wisconsin? Swano, Swanano. Will people there like me? Um, will I fit in? Do they have to track them? Do they have a track team? After doing some research, new questions arose. Are there more cows than people? Will I have to, to trade in my cool clothes for overalls? Do I have a lot? Do they? Do I have to like the Packers? Are we going to have to learn the ice fish to survive? I cried in the back of the van all the way to Swanee, Wisconsin. After screaming, no, for the first six months of my life as a Swanianio, Swanianio. I started meeting great people, making friends, and becoming more open-minded into my new reality. I started saying yes to life once again. And I said to amazing, I said to amazing experiences that created lifelong memories. Saying yes to everything continued through college and into adulthood. Then my boyfriend got down on one knee, knee and proposed. I said yes. When the opportunity to start our own business two years later at age 25 presented itself, I said yes. Author a book? Yes. Started publishing company? Yes. Traveled 26 days a month speaking and crushing business? Yeah, yes. Sponsoring 164 children in India? Yes. When those around me would say no out of fear, often offending themselves struck. I would look like, I would look risk into the face and say yes to opportunities. At 29, I was happily married and making over a million dollars a year. Saying yes served me well. With each yes, however, my obligations began to pile up. I loved all of it. Making people happy, growing my business, traveling and serving others. By my schedule, but my schedule was full, overflowing actually. I was finding it hard to keep up with all the demands of people and saying yes to. Trying to be all things to all people was overwhelming. 
I was over committed and over scheduled. It was when I said yes to expanding our family by having a child of our own that this became abundantly clear, abundantly clear. I realized, especially with a new baby, that I can't say yes to everything and everybody, even if I wanted to. Gabriel was born 12 days overdue, fashionably late, just like his mother. On the way home from the hospital, I got frantic call that I needed to get to the business conference call immediately. I said no. I could hear her head turn and her eyes roll over the phone. Screech. After saying no, I calmly said, I know you got this. Good luck. I realized I needed to come up with a tactic approach to, to saying no. I decided that I must say no. I would uh, offer a solution. I can't make it in the meeting next week, but you can video me in. I won't be able to speak for your company. But I have a friend and colleague who is an expert on that topic. I'll put, I'll put you in touch with them. I won't be able to get out, get in on the call, but I know the perfect person who can take it from there. Early on, saying no was terrifying. I was afraid I could, I wouldn't disappoint others, in and that I would miss opportunities. But I anchored every no with a complete understanding that saying no to certain things would allow me to say yes to the best things in my life. Since breaking up with the word no, I mean, since breaking up with the word yes, or at least making yes simply a friend with benefits, I have been more 26 days a month I've made my health and my family a priority. I've kept up with the demands of others without letting people down. And the craziest thing is my business hit, have hit record numbers in the process. I have also empowered many people to do things on their own. Saying no to certain things just opened the doors for me to say yes to the best things. Being a wife and a mother, all while being a business woman, without being stressed, overscheduled, overcommitted, and overwhelmed. I now have a great ability to manage my time and my man manage my life. Manage my life. It's about finding the happy balance of yes and no that feeds into your values, your, my purpose, and the big vision in my life. Not over, not over committing and saying no when you mean it, even when it's tough to do, is the only way you can achieve the reputation for integrity. That's why Sarah. That's what Sarah learned, and you can too. Here are three Im imperatives that will help you maintain integrity. Number one, keep your word to others. Karma's a bitch. Dishonest behavior and promises not kept will keep will come back to haunt you. Okay. Our advice is to always decide in favor of decency. Do the right thing. Over deliver. Create solutions where everybody wins. Honoring your word throughout the work, working relationship, especially in business, will cause more opportunities to open up for you. You'll establish the reputation as someone who's not only getting to work with, good to work with, but who can be trusted 
with bigger projects and more important duties. Delivering on time, showing up prepared, and paying bills promptly shows not only that you respect other people, but that you see them and their time and work as valuable. Step number two, keep your word to yourself. When you repeatedly lie to yourself, over time you'll quit believing in you. If you have, if you ever been to New York's resolution, for example, on to realize that January 15th that no, nothing's happening yet, there's a broken promise within yourself that you can chip away at your self-worth. Score enough of these disappointments and your sub subconscious mind will get the message that moving forward is not important. It's no different from a friend or colleague who repeatedly agrees to meet you at 4 but shows up at 4.30 or 5 every time. You simply don't believe her anymore. Start to create instant. In, start to create instead a culture of success in your life where you can start sell that you can set small achievable goals then accomplish them as a way to believe yourself again say you commit to going to the gym today simply drive by yay you went to the gym for the first time in forever and you've never been sore on day two go inside Take a tour and sign up as a member. Go home to your spouse and proudly declare, two days in a row. Can you see the difference? On day three, actually turn on the treadmill. Then stand back and watch it row. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> and on day four, get on that treadmill and walk half a mile. Has your fitness level improved this week? No. But your mind has set. You actually started to believe yourself again. Use that momentum to progressively challenge yourself and make position, positive changes in your life. Step number three. Don't overschedule, overpromise, or overcommit. While you may be well-meaning, your integrity level drops whenever you're overscheduled and can't honor your commitments. Of course, women are masters at juggling 27 things at once. We can we see this in our own households. But there's a downside to being really good at multitasking. It's easy to say. I can squeeze it in. I can squeeze in one more thing. Don't do it. Don't overschedule, overpromise, or overcommit. Say no, then delegate and prioritize. De de then delegate and prioritize. You know what we're talking about. When you herd out on the, in the meeting or take the kids to school, how many times have you made a quick stop, knowing it will make you late for the school bell? Or another commitment you are actually supposed to be focused on. Instead, why not try to do one less thing? One, or one thing less. Rather than cramming one more thing into your to-do list, why not remove one thing so you can achieve stress-free, organized, and on time? This applies to other areas of your life, too. In fact, Women will often say yes to a new project when the next commitment will only add stress to the already stressful life. While it's flattering to be asked and wonderful to be acknowledged, your tranquility could, should come first. The same thing goes from business commitments if you're an entrepreneur. While your heart might be saying, I can do that, oftentimes, we see well-meaning women miscalculate the time the time it takes to make to meet deadlines and achieve benchmarks. 
un under promise and and over deliver instead. Tomorrow is Sunday, and I'm, it's starting chapter 21, and it's on passion. So I hope that you can meet me tomorrow for passion, and we'll see what passion offers. And I'll see you tomorrow with passion. You have a wonderful evening. Ta-ta.